Um. <coughs> okay, y'all ready for this Atlanta housewife tea? <laughs> I am so ready to discuss the Housewives tonight. Um, the show, when did the show come on? Sunday? It's what, Tuesday? So, you know, we just a few days late. So, everybody come on in. Um, have a seat. Get your little drink on, whatever you like. Whether it's wine, tea, burr, water, juice, punch, <laughs> whatever. Um, click the like button for me, please, on your way in. Make sure you share the video. And make sure you uh, check in. And why are people calling me when I am going live? I got the notification on my YouTube, my Facebook, my <laughs> Instagram. So, ooh, should I turn the ringer off? I don't know. Okay. Hopefully they won't call back. But anywho, you guys, what y'all think about the last episode of Atlanta Housewives? Um, I watch the one from last week and i didn't get a chance to review it um i was so focused on this r kelly and the tv shows and surviving r kelly and you know other things that was just you know going on and then i was really busy this weekend i had um two big parties to do for birthdays um you know with my cake you know cakes and all that kind of stuff so i was pretty busy this weekend but um i did watch it i didn't review it but i did watch it and i watched the show the other night so you know we're just gonna kind of like you know discuss the latest show or you know whatever but uh as far as this particular episode it is season hey how you doing what's up instagram peeps <laughs> how you been how you been i'm on instagram and i'm on youtube um on this live tonight we just discussed in the latest episode of atlanta housewives um last episode oh yeah by the way it's season 11 episode 12 and it's called the wrong road that was the name of the episode um last episode portia and candy you know we have saw how they got into it over Portia being kicked out of the uh, Michael Jordan's themed jerseys and Jordan's party that Candy threw for Todd's 45th birthday party. You said, let people know about, I have a comedy show, Rose Battle. Okay, cool, cool. Let me know. Um, send me the, uh, inbox me on Facebook, the flyer, and I'll post it for you. February 9th. Okay, kind of like a Valentine pre-Valentine's party comedy show. Okay, that's cool. Okay, but, um, oh, I'm sorry, YouTube, I'm talking on Instagram at the same time. <laughs> All right, thank you. And, um, so she had got kicked out of the party, and I was like, uh, by the way, first of all, the party, um, as far as the jerseys and the Jordans, I thought that was really, really neat, you know, maybe because it was really different, you know, something outside of the box, um, but, you know, I really thought that was really cool, you know, Candy's, you know, her ideas and, you know, she, Candy's really creative like that, but, um, also on last episode, we also saw how Nene and the other ladies, you know, they thought it was really, really shady how Eva didn't invite Nene on the wedding party trip. Uh, when Nene is actually a part of the wedding party. And that I actually agreed on. I thought it was kind of shady, you know, regarding that fact. Even though Eva tried to make it seem like it was a surprise party. And then Portia was like, well, how is it a surprise party if I knew about it? And, you know, so anywho, anywho, I think um, that was a little bit shady on Eva's part. But, you know, she's going to try to make up for that. But as far as this episode, uh, we opened up and... They were at Tanya and Eva's hibachi party where Candy and Portia was going at it. But just for a second, because what they did was they quickly went back like a week in the past, you know, before this big scene. But I just want to um, start off by saying, and y'all might not agree with me, but you know, this is just my opinion. Y'all let me know how y'all feel as usual in the chat section. Um... I think Candy's staff was wrong. Um, and or Candy was wrong. 
<laughs> and that's just again my opinion. Um, I feel that way because Portia was right. Like I feel she was right. Um, if you and her, or you know, if her and Candy, you know, uh, what had any type of friendship, like she said, or was trying to really seriously reconcile their differences, like they both admitted they were going to try to do, you know, several episodes back then Portia should have been allowed to have at least a moment with Candy, you know, to explain her part of what was going on. But instead, instead, they just put her out the party. I mean, you know, what they have put out NeNe, what they put out Eva, what they have just put out Cynthia. I'm just saying. Because when Portia said Candy, if that was some female bothering your husband, Todd, you wouldn't have been upset too? Now, they didn't show like the true altercation, you know, the whole, you know, beginning to end. But I also think that maybe Portia, you know, her being pregnant and all that, she might have been a little bit more upset um, because of her hormones, you know, over the whole situation. But do y'all think that Candy's friend, uh, Jamie and Dennis, um, you know, Dennis's ex, you know, Sherry, I think that's her name, Sherry. Um, do y'all think that Jamie and Sherry was trying to bait Portia or vice versa? Do y'all think Portia was just being petty? Uh, Portia claimed they bumped into her baby daddy, Dennis. But Jamie claimed that Dennis grabbed his ex and Sherry's arm and then gave her a hug and a kiss on the cheek. Um. I don't know. I don't know. But then Portia, they said she started sweating her. Um, you know, sweating them. You know, what y'all doing over here? You know, what's going on? I would have done the same thing as far as, you know, what's up? What's going on over here? You know, who it is? You know, you know, keep it 100. What's going on? Um, but I do think that maybe... I don't know why I feel this way, but Carmen and Don Juan, I don't know. I think I think it was maybe what Portia said, like it was a setup. They were just baiting her. I think that's what it, you know, what it really was. Um, I'm just glad though that they didn't really pop off. It could have it could have went way left because Portia, you know, of course they don't know she's pregnant. And it was Sherry and Jamie, you know, them two together, them two girls. It could have went way left. Let's say they would have jumped her. She's pregnant. They have no idea. You know, if something happened to her baby, then what? So, I don't know. And I'm not, again, you know, I'm, I'm not, I might be being a little biased. I'm just trying to, you know, take all the sides in, the little pieces from every direction. You know, they said this, this, that, and the third. You know, I'm trying to piece it all together. But, um... I'm not saying Portia's right or Portia was wrong. I'm just saying Candy's staff, you know, the factory, her team, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I think they should have contacted her immediately, which I believe they did send a message to her. And I think Candy should have sought Portia out, you know, instead of just brushing it off. You know, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to hear it, you know, handle that, you know, whatever. This is your party and these are your guests. And I don't care how much money you got or how big your shindig is or how many famous people are there. I would have never, that would have never happened at my party. I don't care who it was. If I invited them, what? Who said what? What's going on? Hold on. Hold my drink. Hold my drink. I, I'm about to find out what's going on. You know, instead of, oh, you know, just go handle it, you know, get rid of the issue, you know. So anyway, I feel like uh, Candy, you know, she should have acknowledge the situation a little bit more and try to, you know, find out what really was going on. Um, again, I'm not saying I agree with, uh, if Portia was right or wrong, but I do agree with Portia when she said she think it was a setup, like it was maybe planned by Jamie and the ex Sherry, maybe, maybe, maybe unbeknownst to Candy. You know, I'm not saying Candy was in on this, but I think it's kind of shady with Jamie and the ex-Sherry and also uh, Don Juan 
and um carmen again i, I don't know it sounds a little shady there but <laughs> but i was cracking up i don't remember that man's name the tall man I, the bald head the the man with the big old head uh, <laughs> who was playing security Portia was like I don't know who that man was I don't think he was security he looked like he was her pastor or her minister or <laughs> somebody like that I was like who is that man I was trying to remember did I, do I remember seeing this guy before what's his name I couldn't remember his name and I, I can't rewind and they're trying to look for the you know how normally they put the name you know under uh, the name of each you know, cast member under their picture, you know, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't remember his name. If y'all remember it, please put it down in the comments section. <laughs> but he was like, we'll handle that tomorrow. We will handle that tomorrow. Not today. Not today. We will handle that tomorrow. <laughs> and then Todd started joking about it being an open bar, you know, so Portia obviously must have been lit since she likes to drink. But Todd, she's pregnant, unbeknownst to you. So no alcohol was involved. Hormones, maybe, <laughs> but no alcohol, no alcohol. <laughs> but what was up with the blogs? You know, where we get all our information, all the truth, <laughs> all the 411. Um, they was talking about the next day that she had got into a fight. Portia was like, who told them that? Where did they get that information? I mean, it had all the blogs and the A, you know, and other sources saying she had gotten a fight. I'm like, could they at least have said allegedly? Like, she allegedly jumped on a girl or allegedly threw a shoe or allegedly threw a drink on a girl? They made it seem like... They was throwing hands up in that party. Just lies and fabrications. <laughs> but why is he, Dennis, her baby daddy, even communicating with the ex, Sherry? I, I hope I'm wrong. But I kind of think that maybe, maybe Dennis is probably toying with both of those ladies. I don't know. What y'all think? Then it seemed like he was, you know, might have been doing something shady himself, you know, with the ex, because they still have a lot of communication going on between each other. I don't know. I don't know. But again, but again, I'm not saying Portia was right. I'm not saying Portia was wrong for her actions, but I do think they definitely, you know, could have handled that situation a whole lot better. A whole lot better. But anyway, anyway, about Cynthia. Um, now, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm not going to lie. When she was talking about her daughter, Noelle, you know, she just went to college. At first, her daughter, she didn't want to go. She was crying. She had a nervous breakdown at her going away party. And I was, like, so emotional because, you know, if you ever had a child go off to college like that, a child you done raised all the way up from a little whippersnapper, and they finally, you know, break free and you know you gotta let them fly and they spread their wings they go off to college it's really really emotional but she finally got her there finally convinced her you know go be free you know be all you can be <laughs> that's the army right now <laughs> okay anyway go to college and learn something but anyway um when my son had left for college i was like cynthia Calling and calling her sister like you don't supposed to call them like that. They in college now. They grown now. You know, give them their little space. But I was calling my son. I swear, like three to four times a day, at least three to four times a day. He got wake up calls. He got brunch calls. He got dinner calls. He got good night calls. <laughs> I mean, I call him literally all the time. But it wasn't like he was like. Ah, what? Ma, what? He was, you know, what up, ma? What up? But one time, y'all, let me tell y'all. One time, oh my God, this was so scary for me. Um, I remember one time he had called me at like, probably like 1.32 in the morning, something like that. And I was fast asleep, knocked out. I didn't hear the phone ring. But when I got up the next morning, 
um, probably around six or something like that. I noticed I had a missed call from my son, but no voicemail. And I'm like, what the heck he doing calling me at 1 32 in the morning? You know what he want. And so immediately as a parent, a 2 a.m. call and he's in college. I'm like, okay, something ain't right. Something ain't right. So I'm calling him. Doo, 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 doo. Ring, 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 no answer. Or go straight to voicemail. It was it was doing something like that. I know he wasn't answering. Um, I kept calling and calling and calling and calling and no answer. The hours was going by. Um, I I was at work and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I'm calling from work, no answer. So then I called his roommate, no answer. I called his roommate's mom. She's like, and she was like, uh, Spanish or Mexican or you know something like that and she, you know she had a really strong accent we really didn't get anywhere on that phone call <laughs> so again no answer um I kept blowing him up blowing him up all throughout the morning no answer so around lunchtime I'm like okay something ain't right you know I called my other son I was like dude if he don't answer his phone by such and such time, we jumping on the road, jumping in the car, and we bouncing off to this college to find out where my son at. Um, finally, I got through the security. They somehow figured out, you know, his security. So I'm sure they got hold of his schedule, whatever, found out where he was. Um, he called me back and he was like, Mom, what's up? Why you got security looking for me? I'm like, what the? F when I say, when I say I was cursing in every language you can imagine, I made up new curse words and everything. <laughs> I'm like, what you mean? Why am I calling? You called me at 1:32 in the morning. Why? Why was you calling me that early in the morning? What's wrong? Is something wrong? Did something happen? He's like, no, nah, ain't nothing happened. So why the heck you called me that time of night? I don't know. I was just up and I was bored and I was missing y'all. And I was just calling to see what y'all was doing. Uh, again, again, <laughs> I must have cussed him out in every language. And after that, I was like, don't you ever do that again. Don't ever call me that time in the morning. Then don't answer your phone all day. I mean, I was scared. I was a nervous wreck. And then after that, okay, love you. Bye. Go back to class. <laughs> I mean, I was a hot mess. I was a hot mess, but thank God he was okay. But yeah, whoo, I was filming. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I have to tell y'all that little story. But Cynthia, as far as your daughter, Noel, she would be just fine. Just fine. But anywho, um, Greg and Nene. Now, Greg, y'all, Greg looks really, really good. I mean, doesn't he look good? Um... He, I don't know. He look. If I didn't know any better, I think he was the perfect picture of health. He seems to look more alive and more vibrant um, than before. You know, he was going through all these, you know, this sickness and everything with cancer. Um, it seems like he's on the up and up. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm going to keep him in my prayers still, though. So y'all do the same. Let's all still continue to keep him in our prayers because, you know, he had his, when he got the colon cancer, he had like a part of his colon, you know, removed or whatnot. So now they're, and he's been using like a bag or something, you know, how they do. Sometimes you got to use a bag. Um, but now they're going to reconnect, you know, his colon, you know, back together. So, you know, I pray that all goes well. You know, the surgery, I pray it's a success. And he heals, you know, swiftly and everything. But they were sitting around talking to Peter, 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 Peter. Who? That Peter. I don't know what it is about that man. I've always thought he was just so, so sexy for an older man. <laughs> for an older man. I don't know how old Peter is. Peter looks like he's about. I don't know. I don't want to disrespect him and go too old. So I'm going to say maybe like 59. <laughs> I don't know. But he, he looks good with all that white hair and all that. He just, mm, mm, he just looks yummy. Probably because I just really love, you know, how dark men. I always have a thing for dark skinned men. But anywho, 
Anywho, and the bald head show sure helps too. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, enough about Cynthia's ex. Let's talk about her new man, Mike Hill. I think that's his name, Mike Hill. Um, what do y'all think about him and or their relationship? Um, did it seem genuine? To y'all, I know it's been said, you know, over the past few seasons, the past guy she's been messing with, that they were fake relationships. I mean, she was fronting and they was, you know, fraudulent relationships. <laughs> the last guy, I mean, he was literally like seen with another woman all chilled up and cozy mosey with another woman, you know, by Eva and got busted, you know, so they ended up breaking up. Um... I don't know. Did it seem genuine to y'all? Like, and what about the fact that they haven't seen each other in, you know, seen each other in person in months? I think it was like three months or something like that. Like, can y'all seriously handle a relationship like that? A long distance relationship? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, years ago, I tried it. I tried the long distance relationship before. And let's just say... It didn't last that long. <laughs> it did not last that long. Um, but they just seem so awkward together to me. I mean, is it me or do, do you guys think or feel that she has a lot more chemistry? I, I don't know. I'll just say it. It seems like she has more chemistry with her exes. Not that one that Eva busted. Not him. I'm talking about like Noel's daddy. Um, or Peter. It seems like she has more chemistry with them two than, you know, with this guy. I don't know. They just seem so awkward. Like, I don't know. Like, they really trying too much to make us believe that they really are in a relationship. But that could be me. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. I could be wrong. But um, they've only been dating, you know, not not too long. I think maybe like six months something like that, but she was making it seem like they were already a couple, um, and then she was making it seem like when she was, okay, when he said last, uh, episode, he needed to talk to her, she was like, well, this sounds like something we need to talk about in person, and he was like, yeah, we need to talk about it in person, she was kind of making it seem like she was expecting a proposal of some sort, or, I don't know, I mean, they, they ain't even been together that long, but then, when um he got there, the important thing that he was she was waiting for him to say to her in person was, Would you be my lady? I thought y'all were already a couple. Now he's talking about would you be my lady? And she to me did not seem like that was what she wanted to hear. She seemed like, okay, to me, <laughs> just to me, it seemed like she was kind of taken back, like kind of felt a certain type of way, like, did this fool just ask me why I be his lady when I didn't already express to everybody on the cast and in, in national TV that we are a couple? Like, that's how she was making it seem. But now, finally, he's like, okay, will you be my lady? And then he said, is that good enough for now? What you mean is that good enough for now? Like, okay. <laughs> I can be reading too much into this, y'all. But y'all know how it is when y'all dating somebody, some guy, and you really don't know where it's going. You're seeing each other. You're dating. You're hanging out, going to movies, dinners. You know, doing what other people do in relationships. But you still don't know the status of your relationship. And so you keep bugging them and bugging them. Where are we going from here? Where do you see us in six months? Are you my man? Am I your woman? Are we monogamous? Are we seeing other people? I mean, you have all these ideas and, you know, going through your head. You're, you, you just don't know about the relationship at that particular point. And then when he finally says... Will you be my girl? Or yeah, I want to be, you know, just one-on-one, -on -one, monogamous relationship, you know. Cynthia was like, we've already been in a relationship and we've already been, you know, like, 
I don't know. She just made it seem like they were already in a relationship and already dedicated to one another. And it just seemed mutual. But then when he came and said, is that enough for now? It kind of made it seem like she was stressing him about the relationship and about the status of their relationship. And he was like, is that good for you? Is that good for you? Is that good enough? You know, <laughs> will you accept that for now? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Again, again, it seemed pretty awkward to me, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Oh, and when he said, I like the way you cut that cheese. I'm like, okay, that's a good one. Was that your line for... Um, I'm ready to go to the bedroom. That was that your best bedroom pickup line. I like the way you cut that cheese. She was like, okay, it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> but anyway, back to um Ronnie and Shamari. Um, they've been seeing a therapist for a minute now, you know, at least twice a month. Uh I personally see this as a good thing because some people, um, in order to help, you know, keep their relationship a flow, balance, um, in order, you know, drama free. Um, uh, sometimes they need to seek some sort of counseling every now and again. And they did once upon a time have some issues within their relationship that also included other parties. So, uh, you know, seeking out counseling, that's can be a good thing for relationships. But when she started expressing how much she missed, you know, recording, uh, singing, touring, Ronnie was like, well, I don't know what to tell you, Ma. I don't know what to tell you, Ma. <laughs> because he, he said she needs to be at home as much as possible with their little baby twins. And I get that. I get that. But did y'all catch that subtle shade from Shamari? She was like, I would love to be back out there, back out there singing, back out there making that singing money. But I just can't be like Candy and leave my kids at home days at a time. I was like, okay, Shamari, tell us how you really feel about Candy's parenting skills. <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> I cannot wait to reunion. When Candy sees that, she is going to flip the script because she's basically, you know, making, sh throwing shade at the way that Candy, you know, is parenting her children. I, I can't leave my kids for days at a time like Candy. That would, that would, <laughs> I cannot wait to the reunion when Candy is, because you know they're going to play it. They're going to play it. That's going to be one of the scenes that they're going to replay, and Candy going to get out of pocket with her. Watch. Watch what I tell you. Watch what I tell you. But anyway, um, I don't think Shamari is going to be hitting the road anytime soon or cutting any record, you know, cutting any record deals anytime soon. But then, um, Portia. When she invited Nene, Cynthia, and her other friend over, um, I can't remember her name, but her other friend, the pretty dark-skinned lady, um, they all agree with Portia, you know, that Candy's workers, her team, the factory, that's what she, that's what she calls the factory, you know, overstepped their boundaries, which is also, you know, how I felt. Like, your team is allowed to throw people out of your party that you personally invited without you speaking with them? Mm-mm. I can never let it go down like that. At anything I throw, and I throw parties, like, all the time. Like, all the time. But, finally, Portia also let all the tea out. She was like, I'm pregnant. And everybody, everybody's so happy. They was jumping up and down. Nene, I think Nene was the most excited, even though she already knew. Because she had been holding this in, like holding this big old secret in. And Nene, I'm sorry, but y'all know she can't always hold that tea. She cannot always hold that tea. I'm proud of Nene. She held that in because I knew she was going to spill the beans. I knew she was going to tell somebody just like she did that last time when she told Portia that Candy was talking about her dentist, her baby daddy. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
But anyway, I'm happy for you, Portia. I'm happy for you and Dennis. Congratulations again to you too. But I just hope that your hot dog man isn't trying to play you and his ex, Sherry. Whose tattoo, by the way, he still has on his body, along with other ladies' names as well. <laughs> I wonder if he... <laughs> I wonder if he's going to get that. You know, since he has several ladies' names on his body, you know, he tats up every lady name that he dates. At least that's what, you know, they're saying. Um, I wonder if he gets married, like if him and Portia gets married, if she'll make him cover up those tattoos. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, Portia was so upset. She's like so upset with Candy. She didn't unfollow her on her social media. She didn't delete all their pics together. And I can't blame her. Portia is big mad. Like big mad. Um, at Tanya and Eva's hibachi party. Candy was telling them, you know, what she heard, what she heard, because again, she did not witness it because again, she did not take the time to go over there and address the situation, you know? And so she was like, Portia was just being petty. You know, she was walking up on Sherry talking about what's up, what's up, you know, what's up. Um, I just, I don't know why I just find that kind of hard to, I don't think it happened just like that. I just don't think it happened just like that. Um, maybe it's just because, you know, Portia is pregnant. Maybe that's why I feel that way. But y'all know, sometimes pregnant women, they can be straight up ghetto and will try to fight you while they pregnant. When the hormones take off, sometimes it's, it's hard to keep them at bay and to keep them, you know, Bring it back, you know, keep it down here. Keep it down here because you're pregnant. But Portia baiting the ex who she don't even know. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. But Sherry knows everything about Portia. I bet you can best believe that. <laughs> Please believe me. <laughs> I bet she knows everything there is to know about Portia. But anyway, um, they both feel like the other one owes the other one an apology. And I personally think that Candy should have reached out to Portia. Just because, just because it was her party, her shindig. I mean, it was her party and Portia and Dennis were her guests. I mean, am I wrong here? Y'all let me know if I'm wrong here. Am I being too biased? Am I? I mean, am I? It's not like I have anything against Candy. I love Candy. I love Portia. I love all these ladies. But, you know, I'm just <clears throat> on the outside looking in, you know, giving my little commentary. And that's how I feel. Like, she should have at least taken a second of her time. I know it was her party. I know it was other celebrities there. And it was her husband's, you know, 45th birthday. And, you know, a lot be going on at parties. But I think the least she should have done was at just the minimal thing she should have done was just to check on Portia, make sure everything was okay, you know, find out what re really was going on, but, you know, oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. But anyway, as far as the hibachi party, Portia, again, uh, she wasn't drinking because she's pregnant, of course, but she was getting crunk. I'm like, dang, you would think that she was <laughs> drinking. Portia was lit. I was like, and not as far as alcohol, but just her temper, her horn. I think, I really think her hormones is just getting the best out of her because I can't remember the last time Portia was that lit. Like, I didn't see Portia upset, but she was like on 10. And the way she was talking to Candy, like, I ain't never seen Portia stand up to Candy like that. I was like, you go, girl. Is that that baby? You know, all the hormones, you know, helping you to <laughs> helping you to pop off at Candy like that. But then I was like, you know, Cynthia, Portia, you pregnant. You need to bring it down. You need to bring it on down. And and I agree, she should she need to bring it down. Um, Candy is a fighter. And Candy has no idea that she's pregnant. She had no idea that she was pregnant. But when she started telling Candy um, she was fake, she was like, you fake. I was like, oh, hell. <laughs> oh, hell. 
here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Candy was like, <laughs> you always trying to go from aggressor to victim. Portia said, I ain't no victim, bitch. <laughs> I was like, Candy, when she stood up, I'm like, Portia, just shut up. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen. I was like, Candy stood up on that table. She was like, okay. Then she was like, okay, let me let me just leave. Let me get up on out of here, you know, before this go way, way left. But <laughs> I'm like, Portia, you are pregnant. You are pregnant. You might be just a few months along, but all that fighting and argument is really, really not good for the baby. Like, really not good for the baby. <laughs> and then, you know, when you have a heated dispute like that, you know, when you're pregnant, I didn't seen it before. Hell, I didn't have a heated dispute when I was pregnant. And you kind of forget that you're pregnant. Like, that big old belly down there and that thing kicking inside your stomach, you just forget all about that. Forget all about that. When that's the main thing you should be thinking about because one hard hit to the stomach or falling a particular kind of way or, you know, girls, sometimes these ladies out here be dirty fighting, be dirty fighting and don't ask me how I know. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. But anyway, you know, been to kick you in your stomach or some shit like that. So, yeah, Portia. She needs to tone it on down, tone it on down. And plus, besides that, she had a miscarriage before. You know, in the past, she had a miscarriage before. So, you know, Portia, <sighs> just wait till you drop that load. <laughs> Next time you want to get at somebody like that, wait till you drop your load. But anyway, um, if Candy was to haul off and pop her and something happened to that baby, you know, who's at fault? You know, who's at fault? Some people were like, oh, well, you're pregnant. You should have, you know, should have sat your butt down and kept quiet. And woo -woo -woo -woo. I understand why Portia was upset. I really do. I really do. And I still agree. I still agree with the majority of the ladies who were saying, you know what? Candy should have at least, at least taken just a minute to go over there because all she kept saying was what I heard, what I heard. They said, they said, you was doing this, you was doing that. And Portia was just trying to plead with her like you weren't there. You didn't see it. And I didn't see it. But I'm just going to assume that that ex and that girl, Jamie, I'm just going to assume that it was a little more shade than what they're, you know, bringing back to Candy. I, I just, that's just what I think. Like, they was, mm, mm trying to bait Portia. But anyway, I'm glad she didn't get into no fights because of the fact she is pregnant and nobody else knew at that time, but Nene. So anyway, anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode um, or the episode before last, the one I didn't do a review on. I did, you know, a little recap on it, but at the beginning of this live, but y'all let me know how y'all feel about the cast or, you know, about Portia. Do you think Portia was wrong? Do you think Candy was wrong? Um, do you think the ladies was a, like the ladies were wrong? I, I like I said, I agree with the ladies. And also, what about Dennis? I really think he's playing a part in this as far as Sherry showing up. Like he was up there. Okay, they told Candace that he had went over there and grabbed her arm, and you know he was trying to give her a kiss or whatnot. But then he told turns around and tells Portia, you know, she she tried to give me a kiss, but I did everything, even including the maid's legs. Like, ugh. trying to get away from her. <laughs> He said he did everything, including the Matrix. <laughs> Trying to get away from her. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. That was funny, though. I was like, okay, Dennis. All right. <laughs> if you say so. If you say so. But then she also, you know, told him, I don't understand why y'all even communicating at all. You told me y'all weren't communicating at all. And therefore, that, that's knocked my trust down in you just a little bit. You know, it kind of... You know, it's kind of working with my trust level right now. And she's pregnant and emotional and hormones. If he is hollering at that girl, still talking to that girl, he's wrong, trying to make it sit. And then they was like, he called her and or text her saying, why are you playing? Why are you do that at the party? Ha, 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 ki, 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 ki. I don't know, Dennis. 
<laughs> I don't know. I got to keep my eye on you because I think you, I think you toying with both of these ladies and trying to pit them against each other. And one of them is pregnant. So you got something to think about there. Okay, Dennis. Okay. All right. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the uh, episode again. Don't forget to like the video if you didn't already like it. Those of you on um, Instagram, Thanks for tuning in tonight. Remember, my channels on Face on YouTube are Tanya Knows No Limit and Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews. So make sure you please subscribe to those channels. And also remember, those of you in the Omaha area, if you're subscribed to my YouTube channels, you can enter every month on the first of each and every month um, to win a free cake made by me, the Cake Lady. So, um, and also check me out on uh, Facebook, Tanya's Delights slice by slice and you can look at all my cake art and everything but anywho you guys like the video share the video please subscribe if you are not already a subscriber thank you very kindly and in the meantime and in between time prime time squad stay safe be blessed and i'm out deuces